you just a review here of the SOKOTOA acronym. Okay, so sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent's opposite over adjacent. But look what happens here with these triangles on the unit circle. If the radius is one, okay, the hypotenuse is one, and say this is one half, and this is square root three over two, if you're finding the sine of this angle, that's opposite over hypotenuse, but when you divide by one, you just get one half. So if you could think of this as the y value, and this is the x value, cosine's adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's x over one. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that's y over one. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. So on the unit circle, what we say is that cosine is the x coordinate, sine is the y coordinate, and the tangent is the y over x. Now if you want to take it one step further, the secant is one over x, so if you're over here on the unit circle, let's say right here, the secant would be two, two over one, you just take the reciprocal. The cosecant of theta is one over y, or the reciprocal of the y coordinate, and the cotangent, instead of being y over x, it's gonna be x over y. So what, what it does is it, it makes it easier to find these common trig ratios for common angles that we use a lot, 30, 45, 60, 90, and multiples thereof, by just realizing that cosine's x, sine's y, and tangent's y over x for these points here on the unit circle. So we're gonna look at some examples, but before we get into that, I wanna show you a little bit about the symmetry here involved in this unit circle. So you can see like the 30 degree angle here, okay? 30 degrees is um, pi over six in radians. But what I wanna show you is, is that if you take this triangle and you reflect it over the y-axis, what you end up getting is a triangle that's exactly congruent to this triangle. Okay, so these are exactly the same. So if you notice, these coordinates are exactly the same. The only difference is the x-coordinate's negative because you're going to the left. The y-coordinate's positive because you're going up. So in the second quadrant, x is negative and y is positive. If you take this triangle and you reflect it over the x-axis, again, these three triangles are congruent and you'll notice that the coordinate is the exact same except for the signs are both negative because you're going left and down. And it's the same thing over here in the fourth quadrant. This 30 degree angle has the same coordinates as this 30 degree angle, but the y is negative because you're going right positive, down negative. And it's the same for the 45, the 60. You can reflect it over the x-axis, the y-axis, and find all these other points on the unit circle. So what most students do is they start off with memorizing the 30, the 45, and the 60 degree coordinates, and then they can find the other ones from there. But what you'll find is eventually you're gonna memorize just the entire unit circle. You'll just be able to visualize it. You'll say, oh yeah, I see over here in my mind, you know, this is this coordinate, sine is one half. You'll just start to memorize it from doing it so often. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is the radian units. So we're used to learning degrees first, so we're most comfortable with that. But in terms of radians, let me see if I can show you a little bit about how to break down the unit circle in terms of radians. And so we know from a previous video that 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. So if you're over here at pi, okay, that's 180 degrees. If you divide that up into six slices, see one, two, three, four, five, six, each one of these is gonna be one sixth of pi, two sixths of pi, three sixths of pi, four sixths of pi, five sixths of pi, and it keeps going, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, okay. And if you reduce these, you're gonna get almost all of the points here on the circle. So the ones here, like this is pi over three, if you reduce it, two pi over three, and so on. Now, 
if you take the circle and you look at pi radians, pi is halfway around, that's 180 degrees, and if you divide it up into fourths, one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, this is multiples of pi over four. So one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four, and eight pi over four. So this is a way to find some of these common points on the unit circle by thinking about it as a fraction of pi, whether it's one fourth of pi, dividing the half the circle up into fourths, or dividing half the circle up into sixths, or you could even divide half the circle up into thirds to find your multiples of pi over three. The other thing I wanna uh, mention to you is that in terms of switching back and forth between radians and degrees, whenever you see pi over six, you can think of this as being in the 30 degree, the quote 30 degree family. Pi over four is the 45 degree family and pi over three the 60 degree family. And if you forget, you can always put 180 in place of pi wherever you see pi. So 180 divided by three, yes, that's 60. Or 180 divided by two, yes, that's 90. But if you just remember that these are the 30 degree, 45, 60 degree families, if somebody says, what's seven pi over six? and you haven't memorized that one, it's no problem. You just look at, okay, here's pi over six. I know that's the 30 degree family. Seven times 30, okay, seven times three is 21. Add the zero, that's 210 degrees. You can switch quickly switch back. Uh, so here's another example, five pi over four. If you know that the pi over four is in the 45 degree family, five times 45 is 225. So you can quickly do that calculation until you memorize them. And like I said, there's not that many. So as you do this, just try to make a conscious effort to just memorize where the point's located and what it is in radians, degrees, and the coordinates. But now what we're gonna get into is uh, finding some of the trig ratios of some common points on the circle here, common angles. So let's do a few examples together. So say you wanna find out what's the sine, okay, the sine of 11 pi over six. Okay, this is what I would do, and this is what I did when I first started learning, is I would draw the circle, just a little off on the margin of my page, and I would say, okay, let me see, 11 pi over six. Okay, I knew that that was right over there. Or if I didn't, I could say, pi over six is the 30 degree family. 11 times 30 is 330. So I know where 330 is. It's just 30 degrees shy of 360, one revolution. I memorized the 30 degree 60 degree and 45 degree coordinates on the unit circle. So I knew this is square root three over two, one half. I also knew that I'm going right, that's positive, and I'm going down, that's negative, just like you did in the rectangular coordinate system. Right's positive, left's negative, up's positive, and down's negative. So I knew the sine is the y coordinate, so I knew that it was one half and a negative one half because it's negative here in the fourth quadrant. Let's do another example. Say you wanna find out the cosine of, let's just say it's five pi over four. Okay, now you can see the unit circle over here so you can reference that, but if you wanna to try to memorize it, this is the process that you could go through. Pi over four is a 45 degree angle. Okay, so if you think about that unit circle, one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four, I know pi over four is a 45 degree angle. So I know these coordinates here are root two over two, root two over two. They're both negative because I'm in the third quadrant. I'm going left and down. And the cosine I know is the x coordinate on the unit circle. Sine's the y, tangent's y over x, cosine's x. So my answer is negative square root two over two. <clears throat> now a note on whether your trig ratios are positive or negative. Some teachers will teach this little acronym, all students take calculus. So it goes like this, one, two, three, four, all students take calculus. So what this means is that they're all positive in the first quadrant, sine, cosine, and tangent are all positive. Sine is positive here, but the cosine and tangent are negative. 
tangent's positive here, but the sine and cosine are negative, and the cosine's positive here, but the sine and the tangent are negative. So if you prefer that acronym, you can go that route. I just like to think about you know, the coordinates, if it's positive, you know, or if it's negative, and cosine's the x, sine's the y, tangent's y over x. But this might help you initially as well. Let's do a few more examples, and I think you'll start getting the hang of this. I know it's a big uh, topic, the unit circle, but you want to just dive into it and start, uh, start memorizing it. There's only, you know, a handful of uh, coordinates on here, so eventually you will just memorize all the radian measures as well as the coordinates. So let's say you wanted to find out now the tangent of, let's just say it's 2 pi over 3. Okay, we have this to reference here, but say you didn't. What you could do is you could say, hmm, pi over 3, that's a 60 degree family. 2 times 60 is 120. Where is 120 degrees? Well, you start here. If it's positive, you go that direction. If it's negative, you go that direction. We know that. So this is 90 plus 30 more. I drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. And this reference angle is a 60 degree reference angle. So that means that I know the coordinates of this point. It's a 60 degree. This is going to be 1 half and square root 3 over 2. This is going to be negative because we're going left. Okay, that's negative. Up, that's positive. Tangent, I know, is the y over the x. Okay, so tangent is y over x. So that's going to be this coordinate divided by that coordinate. So square root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. And you can see if you multiply by 2 over 2, these 2's are going to cancel. You get square root 3 over negative 1 which is negative square root of 3. So the tangent of 2 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3. Another technique that you can use, okay, with the 30 and 60 degree angles is that, see over here the 60 degree triangle? See how this leg is the shorter than this leg? We know the hypotenuse is 1, but the short leg is going to be the 1 half side. The longer leg is going to be the square root 3 over 2 side. 1 half is 0.5. Square root 3 over 2 is about 0 0.87. 0 0.87 of course is bigger than 0.5. We know that square root 3 over 2 is larger than a half. So if you draw your triangle and your angles to scale, you don't just uh, you know throw it up there, you're going to be able to tell, oh okay, x is the short leg, y is the long leg in this example. And I'll show you another example and how to use this technique. So let's say we want to find, let's do the um, cosine, okay, of, how about, um, let's do maybe 5 pi over 3, okay, cosine of 5 pi over 3. So say we didn't have the unit circle to reference. Again, what we could do is we could say pi over 3 is in the 60 degree family, 5 times 60 is 300. So let's see where 300 is on this unit circle. It's going to be 90, 180, 270, 30 more. Okay. We drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. You always want to go to the x, never to the y, always to the x-axis. And you look at that angle in between the x-axis and the terminal ray. Okay. And that's your reference angle. So that's a 60 degree angle. Now you can see I've drawn it pretty well to scale. This is the short leg, so I know that's one half. That's the longer leg. I know that's square root 3 over 2. I know this is negative because I'm going down. I know this is positive because I'm going to the right. Cosine I know is the x, so it's a positive one half. Now that seemed like a long process, but as you do that a number of times you'll be able to visualize exactly where that is and you'll know what those values are. So Again, now if, the, if it's a 45 degree angle, 45, you're going to be able to see this is exactly isosceles. This leg and this leg are exactly the same, so you're going to know that these are congruent. We know that's the root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2 uh, point here for the 45 degree angle. So this has been a little bit about the unit circle. Again, take some time to memorize it and to practice and work with it. If you have to draw the circle uh, off to the side, that's a good way to start initially. And then eventually, like I said, you'll, you'll memorize it. So I'll see you in the next video.